and straight to the Ashanti region, where the regional deputy director of prisons says they have to improvise to contain new inmates whose status need to be determined before putting them in cells. He told journalists after the chairman of the Ghana Chamber of Commerce donated PPE to the prison. The Kumase Central Prison has currently exceeded its capacity to over 100%. With original image capacity of 800, the prison now has over 1,900 inmates. More continue to come in the wake of the COVID-19. We cannot refuse the judge's order from a court of competent jurisdiction to refuse an inmate to come into prison. So we are doing our best and then we need assistance so that we can decongest some of the uh, prison establishment that we have in the country. Nana Apieji, the president of the Ghana Chamber of Commons who donated PPEs to the prison, encouraged individuals and groups to reach out to the prison. The place is so appalling. And uh, so we appeal to the public and the individuals who have it to come in to their aid and support them. It can be food, water, and any other form. The Techiman Municipal Health Directorate has also taken delivery of PPEs from corporate Ghana. We'll head straight to the Ashanti region shortly and get some updates from Ashanti regional correspondent via Sky. But let's look at some more stories this afternoon on Midday Live. And um, I'm told I can speak to my colleague Evans Inkum, who's joining us via Skype. Hello, Evans. Hello, Wendy. Good afternoon. Well, good afternoon and uh, happy Mother's Day. A happy Mother's Day to all mothers in the Ashanti region. And um, what's the latest in relation to COVID-19? Now, we just read a story where the prisons there are saying that they have to put in place some measures to prevent further spread should it happen. Now, what measures and what exactly is the update you have for us from the region? All right. So, Wendy, uh, in the prisons um, story, that their, their, their issue is very serious because I quite remember a month ago when I visited the, that particular place. The narrative was that they were not expecting any inmates um, in order to be able to contain the already inmates that they have in, this, in, in the prison because they, they didn't have any place to hold uh, any suspected case. And that was very serious. We thought there wasn't going to be any kind of uh, well, adjudication that was signed any convict or whatsoever to the prison service. It was only uh, a week ago that we heard that inmates are still coming. I mean, new uh, convicts are still um, going to the prison service. And that was quite worrying. So we, 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 we wanted to know how they are containing a situation like that. And honestly, because we don't have that kind of um, opportunity to enter the prison yeah, it was very difficult for us to ascertain the veracity of the claim that they now have a holding center. But you could see some that kind of inconsistency as to whether indeed they have a holding center or they are now creating one. Maybe we will still continue to dig deeper to really know or ascertain the veracity of this particular claim. But people are still worrying as to what exactly is happening mm -hmm at the prison's yard, whether they have a holding center that can take care of new inmates or the already, I mean, uh, densely populated uh, inmates in that capacity. Now, beyond that, or in that facility, beyond that, we're also looking at how people are adhering to the social distancing protocol. If you come to the central business district today, when the, it is a mess, mm -hmm. I'm just coming from that particular place and you could see the level of uh, one would say uh, non-compliance as far as uh, the, the the WHO protocol is concerned. Look, on a normal weekday, the picture is different. On weekend, it it it, 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 it appears or it is as if the laws have relaxed, Wendy. Mm. Now, Evans, just behind you, I can see too clearly, but even in observance of the protocols, I can see um, a vendor. Someone who sells um, airtime or probably does mobile money. There were about two other gentlemen there, but are they in nose mask? Aren't they worried about um, what's happening? And uh, are they interested in following the protocols? Are they in nose mask? If if you can, if you can observe and let me know. You're absolutely right. I mean, as you can see, the evidence is not far fetched. Um, the two or three people that I see or you see behind me 
they are not. And you can also see the level of closeness as they, as they stand. One is sitting, the other one is standing. And they are very close. So there's, there's not so much a distance if they are to observe the two meters interval or in two meters apart, mm. the standard has been recommended. The, the, you, you, I mean, and this is, a, this is one of the examples that you find in the central business district. And it's quite worrying, especially when we continue to have growing number of cases as far as the Ashanti region is concerned, Wendy. All right, well, thank you very much indeed, um, William Evans Inkum, for that update. And um, you bring us some more of the updates in our subsequent bulletin.